Hi, I'm Tony Beauvais. Welcome to episode 8 of Art V. On this program, we'll talk with artist Neralee Henderson about her art and Robert Lee Davis, who is an international mixed media artist. But first, Titan Laurent. Born in Morocco to Belgian parents, Titan became interested in illustration and painting during her school years. Although she followed a corporate career in marketing, her passion for art led her to leave Belgium and continue her education as a cartoonist in New Zealand. Titan joins us now. Hi, Titan. Thanks so much for joining us here. Hi. Nice to be here with you today. Um, I was going through your information prior to this, and you were born in Morocco to Belgian parents. Uh, yeah, that's uh, right. In the early days. Is that where you went to school? And is, is that where you first started uh, delving with illustration and painting? No, that came way after. I grew up in Belgium, so when I turned two or three, they went back to Belgium. And then I studied art in Belgium, but the illustration, I studied it in New Zealand. Right, because in New Zealand also, you were a cartoonist. Yes. Oh, yes, that was the only course that was available, that was offered by the government. Everything yeah. else was very boring, was secretary, computer, so I chose cartooning and illustration. That's how I got to do that. And were the, uh, the cartoon illustrations, they get published? Because you contributed to quite a few publications. Yes, the beauty yeah. of this course is they will not give you your diploma if you were not selling your cartoons. So they really push you to, to, to go in the market. So I worked for the Sunday Time, I published two books. It went like, it started very small and then it went like boom, boom, boom. So I published three books called God Stuff and then it got published in France and that was translated in French, of course, and it was called Dieu qui l'a dit. And then, um, and then I stopped. <laughs> One day uh -huh. I had enough. So. <laughs> um, but do you also, did you return to Europe? Uh, was that coincided when, with when you uh, started painting? When you went back to Europe? Uh, no, actually, so I grew up in Belgium. Yep. And then I went to Luxembourg where I studied watercolors. It's a little country next to uh, Belgium. And then I kind of blow a fuse and I went to New Zealand. Right. Then I went to Mauritius Island, then I went to America for three years, New Zealand five, and I came back to um, Melbourne, and in between, where was it? After Luxembourg and New Zealand, yes, I spent five years in Perth, in Australia. So. Oh, <laughs> yeah, perfect. <laughs> yes, uh, it's a lot. Uh, now, you'd like to work with dyna dynamic rhythms with your work, um, and the mixed media paintings it included some calligraphy as well at some point. Are you still doing that? Yes. My teacher was Gao Shuyang. He was a teacher from Beijing and we really connect. So I was so blessed to having him taking under his wings. So he taught me conceptual art, the Taoist philosophy. It was a really harsh master, but it really peeled all the European background, I want things to be pretty and a bit constipated. So it was just like, forget everything you learn and, and go and function from energy through the arms and then let go. It's, it's, so it, was, it was just a, a completely different journey. It sounded like it was quite an inspirational uh, aspect, but part of the, the, the learning time for you too. Yes, it yeah. completely changed me. The best eight year apprenticeship was this the same yes, time? Yes, the hardest. Eight yes, years. It was the time. best. Sorry? Eight years. It's the beginnings. Yes, and we, 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 we were so connected. We follow each other from one country to the other one. And I think at some <laughs> point he said something like, I was ready because we compare our two at work. And he said, I was ready. And then two months after he left and I never saw him again. So it was really an, an initiation during all of the, the months of COVID uh, restrictions, which we uh, hopefully only have a week or two away from finishing. Um, through that time, by the way, have you been uh, progressively productive? It was amazing. It was really hard to lose everything so fast. Yeah. But what was amazing is just, uh, I, I, it allowed me to finish my book. I've been writing this book for yeah. years and it was always a bit on the side. So that will be published soon. 
it allowed me to start a new medium. So I'm, I'm working you know, on plaster. I don't know if you can see at the back this, this contemporary gallery. And I just love the smoothness and the sexiness of the, the yeah. structure. And then, um, I, of course, it was a time to take photo and then reorganize the websites. Then I create more than art, creating video every two weeks. That was challenging because, you know, I yeah. had to learn to use a camera. I mean, there's so much stuff to do. So, yes, it was full on and very exciting. I'm ready for when it starts. Uh, it and I think it's so important. I think it's important to have a project to keep uh, the, the life, to keep the enthusiasm. I mean, people without future, they perish without anything ahead of them. They just they start eating too much and drinking too much. <laughs> so <laughs> it's good that they, we keep, we keep we keep preparing for an amazing future. So that, yeah. that's, that's what I've been doing. Yep, stick together and keep following the dreams and believe in the art and the cause for it. So thank you yes. so much. You've been an absolute You're bubble welcome. of enthusiastic energy. <laughs> love, love, love it. Being fabulous. A real pleasure to catch up with you Tatan, today. Thanks so Likewise. much for your time. Thank you so much for choosing me. Bye bye. All right. See Talk you next you time. Bye bye. bye. Neralee Henderson started out as a graphic designer and art director, but a spinal fracture required a change of occupation which required less sitting and more flexibility. So, she became an artist. Ten years ago, she started working predominantly with textiles and mixed media. The internationally award-winning artist joins us now. Hi Neralee, thanks so much for joining us at Art V. Thank you, thanks for having me. Um, going through your profile, I noticed that at the beginning, um, you studied fine arts, but was that as a result of having a spinal injury? I actually did uni before I broke my back, but I did go to graphic design um, after doing a year of fine art. And after completing that degree, worked for a few years as a graphic designer before I sat down the stairs and broke my back. And mm -hmm. after that, had seven years to reassess what I wanted to do where I couldn't sit for very long and uh, started to do fine art from there. I still can't see it, the hours that would be required to do graphic design for day in day out. Yeah, I can associate with an injury. In 2012, I was um, crippled on and off for about eight weeks out of two years, a horrible injury. You moved into working with um, multimedia and textile, yeah? Yes, yeah, around 12 years ago. Uh, my mother actually dragged me to the Australasian Quilting Convention back when I wasn't uh -huh. doing a whole lot. And I kind of thought it'd be grandma stuff, joining triangles. <laughs> uh, I had no idea you could draw with the sewing machine, none at all. Right. So it was like a whole new world. And it meant that I got to score brownie points for spending time with my mother without even spending time yeah. with my mother. It was you have started a Facebook page. It's um, Textile Art, is that the name? That's it, yeah, Facebook group, Facebook um, group. Textile Fine Art. So yep. the idea was to show fiber art as a valid art medium because let's face it you can make art out of old aluminium cans but the second you do it out of fabric people consider it to be the c word craft 
Right. Uh, not that there's yeah. anything wrong with craft, but when yes. you're an artist and trying to make statement pieces, uh, with you know, especially with me, I do a lot of artist work, and and it, you know, I want the I want the art statement and the meaning to be even more integral than the look of the piece. And on that, uh, through that group, you actually show work in progress, images of um, projects underway. Yeah, with that. So a little bit on the textile fine art. I do that more through my own Facebook page, which is the um, Nerily Henderson Artist Fine Art Quilter Facebook page. Yep. And that I do show pieces step by step, which actually I thought people would be bored silly, but it's been a great way of doing it. People feel more involved with the piece. You can often sell a piece before you even finish it. Yeah. Mostly my work is uh, an exhibition that they're going to, so they're not available for immediate sale. It's, yeah, it's a fantastic way of marketing and getting people involved to see how you create. During COVID, vast everyone else, and we're still in it, nearly through these restrictions. We're at the tail end now. I think it's October the 16th or 18th today or something. Um, how has COVID, the, the time, well, this, the most difficult winter we've had in Melbourne from possibly ever, how did you cope? How did you travel? Okay. Okay, well, I've looked at some of your other interviews and I'm probably going to be a huge disappointment. I yeah. didn't. I felt I got a bit depressed <laughs> making... Everyone else has gone, oh, I did all these great opportunities oh, I'm glad I and I'm going to be telling you, I did nothing. Um, I honestly, making artwork, especially artwork on feminism or social statements, it just paled in insignificance compared to this huge worldwide pandemic, yeah. people dying, like... Oh, and I'm oh. making some pretty art. What's the point? Uh, so, honestly, I did nothing for a good five or six months until my <laughs> Facebook group and page started to go, hey, you're not making anything. And as I settled into lockdown a little bit more, my husband yeah. stuck into state for work. I, I did get my mojo back, only really in the last month or two, and Ooh. started creating. I did get a magazine article and uh, because they wanted – and it was a magazine I've been in before, so I wanted to yeah. do some new works that that audience wouldn't have seen, and that really drives me. I am a horrible artist in that I only work really productively when I have a deadline. Right. Um, and yeah. my work often has six months of thought before the actual piece begins construction. So that deadline really pushed me, and then after I started again, I was like, oh, yeah, I forgot this is fun. And one thing I would like to add, if I can, is my latest piece, uh, you asked me specifically about covid and yeah. for my latest piece, I decided to ask people for uh, the most absurd thing they've heard either through the media or via in person with an actual friend, um, something, you know, like the It's Just a Flu or Dictator yeah. Dan or yeah. any of those sorts of things. I had 238 responses on just one of my calls for requests. Wow. And in that, a lady was telling me about her daughter who was a nurse in the USA who uh, didn't have any PPE, had to wear the same mask for three days and died of COVID in July, and she was 45 years old. Mm. So because of that, I'm doing a quilt that's going to incorporate those responses yeah. uh, of the ballerina looking very angsty, and all the COVID statements are going to be through the background. So I think now it's a great time to start looking at what we've learned during the pandemic and then incorporating yeah. that back into our art in maybe a positive way that can have some impact. Indeed, quite poignant. Nice point to finish on. Thanks so much for your time to, uh, today, Nerily. Thank you. Uh, hopefully we'll catch up with you uh, later on in 2021 and see how things are going then. Good on awesome. you. Awesome. Thank you very much. Robert Lee Davis's work was greatly influenced by the stories and conversations he encountered and the experiences he had during his travels across the continents. Robert is an international mixed media artist who works in oil, found objects, acrylic paint, pen and ink, pencil and collage. 
Working across painting and collage, he combines formal techniques with newsprint and images from journals and magazines. His creations are cinematic paintings reminiscent of early colonial coastal cartographic surveys, but with minuscule precision. And Robert joins us now. Hi, Robert. Thanks so much for joining us here on Art V. Well, thank you, Tony, for inviting me. Um, I've had a look at your, uh, your bio, and also thanks very much for the, the lovely reel you sent in. We'll probably pop that into the segment. But you were originally born in the USA, and your early days you worked as an early childhood educator in art. <laughs> That's right. I felt like um, I needed a fallback just in case the art didn't go as well as I wanted it to. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, I, I say that because um, I, I, I just am pretty honest with why I got into into it. Sure. But getting into it, um, I developed really a, a really love and respect for the for what kids can do and make. Oh, indeed, indeed, yeah. Uh, child's art sometimes uh, says it all. You wonder why we bother. Mm. Uh, but you do work. <laughs> in, uh, you, you work in a range of mixed mediums, though, with your art, though, don't you? You use a, 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 mm. a oil, pen, paper, a, a, anything else? Um, ink, uh, pencil, coloured pencil. I, I think I use whatever is at hand at the moment that will help me get across my idea. Right, OK, because sometimes it could be found items. We've had other artists who have been recycling stuff they find on the street or at the tip. But, but not to that extent, or possibly? No, no. It, yeah. I incorporate a, a lot um, of found. I, I call it found, but I, I mean, people say found objects, but I say discovered um, artworks. Um, it, it's just a different way of seeing. Like, um, for example, um, when I saw uh, this fluff, it was a piece of fluff ball that was rolling in the street. Um, I followed it and it was gathering all of this information from the environment around it. And I finally caught up to it and took a photo of it. And that was um, one of the, the sections in a painting that I created where it was talking about um, how we gather all the things that are familiar to us and put those and those go into our creation of, of artworks or any type of uh, art form. Right. So I, I guess it's, yeah. And you've also, um, some of your work has been described as very precise. Now, was that the cartographic <laughs> uh, work that you were doing? I think it's because, um, honestly, I think it's because I cut out the work, the works that I, that I choose to cut out are very precise. So meaning, um, if I'm cutting out um, a steeple for a landscape, um, I do follow the lines. Um, I, I lived in China for a bit, and then I was taught to that the paper is that the scissor acts as a stationary moment, uh, stationary object, and the paper glides through that. So I think that's why it, it really looks pretty precise. I mean, um, yeah, and because I combine differing um, materials together to create that work. Um, it helps tell that story, and it does look, um, I guess, pretty precise. Maybe that's why. Sure. Now, um, there's uh, another part to your work, too, that I also play with, the white space. Mm. Uh, yeah. The... White space is really important for me, um, or the negative space, because, because my, many of my works are um, intricate in design, I want people to be able to stand back take a breath, rest, and then go back into it. So that's why the white space is just as important, that negative space, as the object that I'm working on. Uh, what are you working on and what's coming up? Mm. Um, what I'm working on is um, uh, a mindfulness and art workshop through the, um, the Jeffrey K Museum of Anesthetic History. Do you, do you know about this museum? It's got to be one of the most unique museums I've, I've, I've ever encountered where they've documented the history of anesthetic medicine. Um, wow. Anyway, they have a, a beautiful museum and um, the curator um, there, um, Monica Cronin, she 
um, asked me to do an art and mindfulness workshop with the doctors and staff. Um, so I'm getting ready to do that. There's going to be a series of five where I take them through looking at art and as a mindful appreciation and a relaxation technique. Oh, marvellous. Have um, you been doing that through the COVID restrictive period from, from March or when did you commence? Um, that, that will commence in two weeks. Right, but, um, but you've been but, building but, it. But I did through... a workshop. Yeah, they're building it now and they're, they're finding yeah. that during this time of COVID, um, the abstract nature of where we are um, has, has kind of hollowed out our relationships. Yeah. So it's learning how to interact again, how to be present, how, but not just present like you and I are, are present, but we're still distant by the camera, by the video technique. How do you be present and um, mindful in the space that you're in right now? And then to prepare for when we open up again. If we head to Gasworks, we can find out what you're up yeah. to. Yeah. Oh, marvellous. Right. OK. Right. Well, I look forward to uh, seeing what's coming up in Gasworks. And that's in uh, 25th of November, that one. Yeah. yeah? Should great. Be cool. mm -hmm. All right. Well, finally, it's been great to uh, finally catch up with you and have a chat. Love your stuff. Uh, had a look at it. Uh, can't wait to see some more. So thanks very much for your time. Oh, well, thank you, Tony, for putting us together. I think art will be the healing solve that we'll need in the future going forward. So thank you for being um, the headstone for promoting art. I've said it before and I'll say it again. You can't kill art. It only keeps growing stronger. <laughs> <laughs>